Okay, so the last video, uh, I'm going to attach this to it. But as I was saying, like when you call on Jehovah's name specifically, you start to build a relationship with him and you start to learn to rely on him. In a minute, like financial wealth, um, material wealth, I mean, even if anything that we do, it probably won't matter. Because the Bible does say those who call on the name of Jehovah, those doing his will, those are the ones that will be saved. That's it. So we don't get to choose what we're going to go through or our circumstances or anything of that nature. Not one bit. Why? Well, I said why. While people are talking about manifesting um, the universe um, and what is it um uh, what else they say manifesting the universe and there's something else i can't think of but when it's all said and done and everything people have to realize that in the universe there are demons uh in the universe if you're not relying on the right source you can be reliant on that demonic source and the whole purpose of everything that's happening is worship who are you worshiping who are you giving glory to who are you honoring and this world that we live in is owned by jehovah but right now is not ruled by jehovah so the influence and the impact that is affecting everyone not just some people everyone it even impacts me, myself, and I, because I'm human too. I live here. So, it's a matter of, I guess, like I say, being woke. <laughs> being um, aware and trying. So, I just looked up these few scriptures. Um, I'm going to change. Because I can talk, y'all. I can talk for a really long time and give a lot of information. But in the book of Judges... I'm going to read um, this verse, um, 33. It says, as soon as Gideon died, the Israelites again committed spiritual prostitution with the Baals. And they appointed Beelzereth as their God. The Israelites did not remember Jehovah, their God, who had rescued them from the hands of all their enemies around them. And I turn to 2 Kings. Um... <laughs> it, it's a lot to read and learn but you know what we're just going to go to verse 27 and start there and it says at that the king of Assyria commanded have one of the priests whom you took into exile from there return to live there and to teach them the religion of the god of the land so one of the priests whom they had taken into exile from Assyria, came back to live in Bethel. And he began to teach them how they should fear Jehovah. However, each different nation made their own God, which they placed in the houses of worship on the high places that the Samaritans had made. Each different nation did so in their cities where they were living. So then we have all the names and everything. And, you know, we can backtrack and reset. Hold on. So in 2 Kings, we're just going to go ahead and jump down and start at verse 37. And it says, And the regulations, the judgments, and the law, and the commandment that he wrote for you, you should always follow carefully. And you must not fear of the gods. And you must not forget the covenant that I made with you. And you must not fear of the gods. But it is Jehovah, your God, whom you should fear. As he is the one who will rescue you out of the hands of all your enemies. But they did not obey. And they followed their former religion. So these nations came to fear Jehovah, but they were also serving their own graven images. 
but their sons and their grandsons have done just as their forefathers did down to this day and you know we we can keep going and everything the story of hezekiah and um different bible verses and uh, characters and this is the one thing that i really appreciate that really helped me to grow uh, in bible stories is when reading bible stories look at the people as people they lived in different time periods but look at the situations and what they were going through and the environment that they were living in uh, not in a form of judgment but in a form of trying to understand what is the lesson what is the point um so, I mean, it's interesting. They get, oh, it's interesting. Bible stories are really good. They're really, really, really good. And just, oh my God. Um, thinking about them being in Egypt and, you know, the pharaohs and the people that they had to approach and, you know, having different um, influences that they had to be around and the kind of faith they had to show. Um, like I had someone come across, across my timeline and it was talking about the story a lot and how once he got in, you know, the mountains and everything, after everything that had happened and, you know, like got so drunk that he basically wasn't functional uh, and his daughters and everything. We, if you know the story, you know the story, right? Well, they asked, how drunk did he get? One, you got to look at the fact that this man, even though he had faith, he had just witnessed the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He had basically <laughs> was about to sacrifice his daughters uh, to being raped and harmed because he had angels in his house because they wanted them him to hand them over not to mention on top of that he had just lost his wife and Lot wasn't a poor man he was a rich man so he had lost his wife witnessed the destruction of a city lost all his material possessions his daughters had lost their fiancés everything and so not only that he probably felt like it really was not just the end of you know the city that he stayed in but the end of the whole world and basically they escaped with nothing but what they had on their back so mm, excuse me it helps to look at it from a perspective of imagining expanding those feelings those thoughts the actions behind it and how it can help us to grow in faith that's the best way i can put it so um oh yeah y'all i i can be at this all day <laughs> all day um so i'm just gonna leave it at that i hope you all just really um watch the videos enjoy them that it helped that it really helped because we need it this is what improving mental health looks like because we can't do it on our own and yeah entertainment and all those things and that stuff help we need outlets we need recreational outlets we need you know wholesome recreational outlets so that we can stay positive so that we can stay moving so that we can you know cope basically work through <laughs> different things because it's hard it's, a, it's hard and it's not I don't like to think about how difficult something can be I like to think about just one day at a time do what I can while I can and get through that so again like I said I hope that helped and 
I'm going to leave it at that. But. <laughs> Bye.